What's up peeps? Today we're going to be starting the first video in the series which is the urinary system and the subtopics which we are going to be looking at in today's episode is excretion and the formation of urea. So let's get started. So what exactly is excretion? Excretion is the removal of waste products from the body that was produced during metabolic processes. Now the key words here are waste and metabolic processes because excretion deals with removing the waste that was produced by our bodies from our body. Now these products will be very toxic if they were allowed to accumulate. So therefore there must be something in place in order to remove it. There are several excretory products formed in our bodies but two in particular are produced in greater quantities. These are carbon dioxide and urea. We know there are millions and millions of cells in our body and carbon dioxide is produced by almost every cell because of aerobic respiration. Now the waste carbon dioxide is then transported from the respiring cells to the lungs via the blood and then it is breathed out into the air. Urea however is produced by only one organ and that is the liver. Two key things to know about urea before we take a look at its formation is firstly, it is formed from excess amino acids and secondly, it's transported from the liver to be excreted. Let's now talk about the formation of urea. Proteins in the diet are digested, they are broken down to produce amino acids which are then absorbed and transported by the blood. Unlike other substances such as fat, the human body is unable to store the excess protein. Since we usually eat more protein than we actually need, something needs to be done about the excess. There are two stages in the formation of urea. These are deamination and the ornithine cycle. Both of these stages happen inside the liver. Let's take a look at deamination. In deamination, the excess amino acids, meaning excess proteins, are broken down as follows. This is a structural formula for an amino acid. On the left hand side is the amino group since it contains nitrogen. This amino group is what makes the entire molecule a nitrogenous waste compound. Therefore, if we can eliminate this group, the remaining molecule can be recycled to release the energy that is stored within its bonds in the process of respiration. Now you may or you may not need to know the exact reaction that takes place in deamination, but just in case you do need to know it, let's check it out. In deamination, the amino group is removed and the amino acid is oxidized as it reacts with oxygen. This produces a keto acid and ammonia. Let's take a look at the products. Since the keto acid is stable, it either enters the Krebs cycle and is respired or it's converted to lipids and cholesterol, therefore it's stored as fat. The ammonia, however, is very toxic and it's also very soluble, so it has to be removed. At this point, it's immediately converted to urea via the ornithine cycle. Let's now take a look at the ornithine cycle. Here, the ammonia is combined to carbon dioxide, producing urea as seen in this equation. The urea produced is still toxic but it's not as dangerous as the ammonia and it's also less soluble. The liver releases the urea into the blood and it's then dissolved in blood plasma to be transported all over the body. Upon reaching the kidneys, it finally passes out as urine. So that, my friends, was excretion and the production of urea. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like these. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. This is Sangeeta saying thank you for watching and see you next time.